the early models of the universe, geocentric and heliocentric models. During ancient times, the Earth was perceived to be flat. Early Babylonian, Chinese, and Egyptian civilizations believed that Earth had corners. It was then believed that if you set to sail straight in the ocean, you would get to the edge of Earth, and fall. The Greek philosophers also investigated on the shape of Earth. All of them, described Earth, and the heavens, as spherical. Here are the ideas of some Greek philosophers about the sphericity of the Earth. Pythagoras, started the idea of the spherical Earth. Eudixus of Nidus, another Greek philosopher, constructed a planetary model, based on the thought that the Earth is spherical. Plato, also a Greek philosopher, educated his students on the sphericity of the Earth, but made no justifications. Also, Aristotle noted that there were stars in Egypt, that could not be seen on the other parts of the Earth. This phenomenon, was only possible, if the Earth had a curved surface. Eratosthenes, a Greek philosopher, and mathematician, was able to estimate the circumference of the Earth. Before the telescope was invented, ancient astronomers only used their unaided eyes to observe the sky and the stars. Eventually, they created models of the universe. Geocentric, meaning Earth-centered. And heliocentric, which means Sun-centered. Here are the philosophers who propose the geocentric model of the universe. Eudixus. Aristotle, Claudius Ptolemy, and Tycho Brahe. While those who believed in the heliocentric model are Aristarchus, Nicolaus Copernicus, Galileo Galilei, and Johannes Kepler. For Eudixus, the universe was composed of the Earth, and five other planets that are visible with the unaided eye. Namely, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. He was considered as the first astronomer to explain the retrograde motion of the planets in the sky. Also, he found out the differences in the motion of each planet, that should be considered to give an accurate description of the universe. Retrograde motion, is an apparent change in the movement of a planet through the sky. From night to night they gradually drifted in the sky relative to the stars. Generally toward the east, but occasionally they stop their eastward motion, and reverse direction, moving toward the west. The planets, are apparently changing direction during the year. This phenomenon can be observed by the Greeks, but they still do not know how to explain this.
Aristotle patterned his model for Mutixis. It showed that the universe was spherical, and finite. He also perceived that Earth was at the center of the universe, and was stationary. He believed that the Earth is too big to move, thus, it could not rotate. Other celestial bodies were built up symmetrically, in concentric spherical rings, moving around the Earth. Aristotle believed that the Earth was composed of four elements Earth, water, air, and fire. Beyond Earth, are the planets, and the Moon, which revolved in spherical rings. He further described that each ring, was in physical contact with one another, which means, the motion of a heavenly body in one sphere, will affect the motion of a nearby heavenly body. It was Aristarchus of Samos, a Greek astronomer, who made the first attempt, to create a heliocentric model of universe. Based on Aristarchus' model, the Sun, and the fixed stars were at rest, while Earth, and other planets, revolved around the Sun in a circular path. Aristotle, and many philosophers, do not agree with this, since stars did not show parallaxes during the year, which they must if the Earth goes around the Sun. Stellar parallax, is the annual shift in the apparent positions of the fixed stars. A moving Earth should produce stellar parallax. This means the star's position in January is different from its apparent position in July of the same year. Also, distant stars will have smaller parallax, while closer stars have larger parallax. So he argued that the stars were very far away, thus, no parallaxes could be observed. And since stellar parallax is only detectable with telescopes, his accurate speculation was unprovable at the time. Claudius Ptolemy. In his model, he assumed that Earth was at the center of the universe, while the other celestial bodies revolved around the Earth, in perfect circles with constant velocity. Ptolemy's model was considered more refined, than previous geocentric models. His model could explain the motion of the celestial bodies accurately. Like the retrograde motion of the planets. In his model, Ptolemy assumed that planets revolved on epicycles, the small spheres, which in turn moved around the deferent, the large sphere. In this illustration, the red planet revolves on epicycles, the small green circle, which in turn revolve around the deferent, the large blue circle. The center, which is Earth, of the deferent, is called the eccentric. As seen on Earth, the movement of planet eastward, is direct motion. While the movement of planet westward, is retrograde motion. Notice here, the epicycle moves slowly eastward, and the planet moves rapidly eastward. Then later as it moves along the epicycle, 
It moves rapidly westward. During that time, Ptolemy's epicycles has offered the best explanation, to the retrograde motion of the planets. The planets revolve in Ptolemy's epicycles, only during the months when the retrograde motion can be observed. In this case, it's during August 1st, until October 1st. Tycho Brahe A Danish astronomer who also made planetary observations. Brahe believed in a geocentric universe, but his idea of the geocentric universe is slightly different from Ptolemy's model. In the Tychonic system, Earth was at the center, the Sun, and the Moon revolved around it, and all the other planets orbited the Sun. Such a model was a type of geoheliocentric system. Here is an illustration of the geoheliocentric model of the universe, by Tycho Brahe. Nicolaus Copernicus During the 16th century, Copernicus, a Polish astronomer, revived the heliocentric model of Aristarchus. He was actually hesitant to publish his findings, because he was afraid of condemnation by religious leaders but it was still published a year before his death. Copernicus strongly believed in the heliocentric model, because there were loopholes in the Ptolemaic model, in terms of predicting the positions of the planets. In Copernicus' model, heavenly bodies exhibited constant circular, and perpetual motion, along their epicycles. This is a large epicycle, wherein the Sun is at the center. order of planets from the Sun, is Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and the fixed stars. The Earth is constantly rotating on its axis, while it is continuously revolving around the Sun. Also, now the heliocentric model can clearly explain the retrograde motion of the planets. Since the Earth revolves faster than Mars, there are times that Mars seems moving backwards. However, the Copernican model was still not accepted, because the movement of the Earth cannot be observed. The model is also still unable to explain stellar parallax. Galileo Galilei, was a pivotal figure in the development of modern astronomy. He invented the telescope, and proved the Copernican hypothesis, Galileo believes that the Earth rotates on its axis, and revolves around the Sun. 
He also stated that the very distant stars do not exhibit parallax. In Galileo's model, the Sun is the center of our solar system. Our solar system is a part of a larger universe. Using a new invention, the telescope, Galileo was able to view parts of our solar system in motion. Here are Galileo's observations, new stars, the Milky Way is made up of stars, mountains and valleys on the moon, four moons orbit Jupiter, now called Galilean moons, phases of Venus. Sunspots, which are rotating around the Sun about once a month. The rings of Saturn. And that planets are disks, not pinpoints of light like the stars. Johannes Kepler, a German astronomer, who lived at about the same time as Galileo. He also believed in the heliocentric model of the universe. In Kepler's model, he showed mathematically that Copernicus' idea of a sun-centered system, worked well if the uniform circular motion, was replaced with uneven, but predictable, motion along off-center ellipses. Here are the three laws of planetary motion by Kepler, first is the law of ellipses, the orbit of the planets is an ellipse, with the Sun at one of the foci of the ellipse, the closest point to the Sun in a planet's orbit, is the perihelion, the farthest point is called, the aphelion. Second is the law of equal areas. The line joining the Sun and the planet, sweeps over equal areas in equal times, as the planet travels around the orbit. This means, the planet moves fastest at the perihelion, and slowest at the aphelion. Third is the law of period, or harmonic law, the square of the period of revolution of a planet around the Sun, is proportional to the cube of the average distance of the planet from the Sun. 